Alright, and I've turned my render distance back to normal so that there's some kind of a view of this. And let's do it. Okay. I'd say it was fairly effective. Blasted some coal loose. Gather up some of these pieces and do something about that water. I suppose I should have dried the water up before doing this. And in the future I think I will. In the meantime, I'm just going to work to contain it so that it's possible to get around here. Yes, definitely in the future have better planning when there is a body of water involved. Either dry it up or don't blast the dog on close to it. But that's okay. Lesson learned. This would be another good use for the gravel that tends to accumulate. Anyway, I'll take care of the rest of that another time. I'm sure nobody wants to watch me fill in water. I don't. <laughs> All right. So basically, that's my plan. And I'm going to experiment with wider spacing. Basically, what I need to do is to come up with the widest spacing that will still assure everything getting set off from the blast. You know, the first one going off set off the rest of them. And then start laying out blast patterns all over this area. And blast it down to rock. 
And for that matter, once it's down to where the, most of the exposed dirt doesn't have grass on it, I believe a two or three block wide barrier be, between or gap between the grass and the dirt will prevent the grass from spreading back to the dirt. At least that's what I believe it is. We'll find out if that has grass on it in the morning. All right. I'm going to AFK through the mor through the night to actually give this and this stuff an attempt a chance to attempt to spread and see if this dirt in the middle here gets infected with grass. And so I'll catch you in the morning. It's going to be a long night. Well, you'll never believe what happened to me overnight. I had parked right here, like so, overlooking the blast area to wait out the night, testing the regrowth of grass and with the dirt two blocks away from actual grass and I had to take care of something so I was away from the computer for a while and I ended up being two nights parked here on the spiller and when the dawn rose on the next morning I went to hit the F12 key to resume recording and when I did, Minecraft disappeared completely. And when I got it restarted just now, my wonderful explosion of 64 TNT had been completely undone. As if it had never happened. And I honestly thought Minecraft saved stuff a whole lot more frequently than that. But apparently it didn't. However, I'm thinking now that it's kind of just as well. Because it had occurred to me while I was waiting for part of that time that what I should have done was some testing to find out just exactly how close the TNT would have to be for one explosion to set off another one. and what the most effective way to use it to get the most clearing per area you know the most uh, dirt cleared per explosion and so I figure this is a good opportunity to do that so I'm gonna head over here to a clear area, a clear flat space. And I'm just going to start by setting down one TNT on the surface and see how much that does. Okay, that's a pretty good blast, but it doesn't take it all the way down to stone. All right, now let's try another one. And we'll position it in the hole so that once it becomes active, it will fall down three blocks. And see how that one does. Okay, that one blasted it down to stone this is good so setting 
each charge in a hole like that is going to be more effective than just planting them on the surface. The next question I want to see about is how close do they have to be for one to set off another? And here we've got two, three blocks apart. And it does not set off the other one. So perhaps a redstone circuit between them, or a redstone circuit that sets them both off, would be the better way to go. So let's get another flat space and try that. Alright. And if we can catch a chicken in the explosion, so much the better. Okay, be right back. I'm going to go ahead and grab a lever. But, well, no, I can make one here. Because the one that I had was included in the things that got undone in that great strange crash. I've had crashes like that before, but not often. Oh good, we got the chicken. Or did we? But we did clear a good size area down to stone with just two blocks of TNT. That's going to be a much more efficient usage than just putting a field of them out there on the surface like that. And that's good because while I do have actually quite a bit of TNT, I mean the 10 stacks that I brought with me over here is not even close to all of my reserves. Frankly I've got this stuff positioned all over the Empire. And if I gathered it all together, I'd probably have 50 stacks. I have spent a lot of time AFK in that uh, mob trap. You know, I, I have to go somewhere or do something or whatever. I'm not going to be doing anything else with the computer. I will park AFK in the mob trap and collect TNT and everything else. So, I'm going to go ahead and gather this TNT back up and then sleep till day and set up a much more involved charge. Let's see if we can get some more, much more effective results with it of more material removed per block of TNT. And I'll catch up with you when I've got that set up to go.
and welcome back. I've got the charges all set up. I've got 14 charges of TNT, with three spaces between each one, a line of redstone running down here with repeaters as needed to fire off each one, to get each one set off, ignited, whatever. And the whole thing in a nice straight line here. See if perhaps with 12 charges of TNT, we can't do a lot better than we did with 64 a while ago, before it was undone. And so, let's set this off and find out. Well, they did all go off at once, apparently. Very good. And the result is a pretty good size area cut all the way down to stone, which is what I'm aiming for with this project. This will remove the maximum amount of material with the minimum expense. Although I am going to have to head back and pick up some more redstone. Because I am not getting all back that I used. Big surprise. An awful lot of it is right next to the TNT when it goes off. so It will get destroyed. But, as you saw earlier, I have an abundance of redstone. So, this looks like a plan to me. Just start cutting a series of stripes. Actually, what I ought to do, and I think I will start marking out where that needs to be is to use this blasting technique on the border of this area. Go ahead and measure out 150 blocks from the center in all directions. And begin blasting long lines like this to start clearing this area down to stone so that the passive mobs will not have a place to spawn except for what I designate. And speaking of that, I had a thought. I'm going to uh, set up an area and I think it's going to be right around here. And I'm going to take this area and I'm going to fence it in and allow grass to stay in there. And then I will remove grass from as much area around here as possible, eventually getting all of the grass in the affected area taken care of. And the passive mobs will have no choice but to spawn in that fenced off area. It's not quite the mob system I have in mind, but it might do for starters getting things going. In the meanwhile, I'm going to take a run back to the main base and pick up a couple of more stacks of redstone and I think maybe a little bit more cobblestone because I'm getting cobblestone out of this but not very quickly and I'm going to need it to cook up to for uh, smooth stone to make redstone repeaters so on. So I'm going to get after that and welcome back. I'm walking along the southern border of the area that I'm working with here and as you can see well it's snowed since then but you can see that I've begun blasting along the border here and I've taken out quite a bit 
although from the current viewpoint you can't see very much. Let's see, we get up here. Yeah, this is better. As a matter of fact, the netherrack border that I put down has actually taken quite a beating. Some of the blasts were a little too close to it. But, as you can see, a pretty good swath of grass has been removed. And this is the, let's see, this would be the the eastern border, yeah. This would be the eastern border of the area. And in putting down this border, in this particular case, I cut right through the mountain instead of going over it like I did on another in another uh, part of it. A big chunk of the top of this has been blown off. And a lot more here. I've uncovered a... Actually, this would be about the third or fourth cave that I've uncovered with this blasting. There's been a lot. These borders are 300 blocks long from corner to corner. And I believe to get from one corner to the other, I believe I used about a little over two and a half stacks of a little over two and a half stacks of TNT, yeah. And it's been effective. A lot of grass removal has been going on. I admit that using TNT like this may not be the most economical way to use it or the most efficient way to clear the grass but it's a darn sight more fun than using a hoe especially when the area you're working with is mostly landlocked you know if I had been fortunate enough to find a large enough body of water in the area then uh, perhaps more traditional, conventional means would have been the way to go. But, I just didn't see that as being anything that would take less than half a forever. Now, this here down here is uh, actually about as far as the blasting has come so far. Basically, I've got about half of the border blasted about anywhere from 5 to 10 blocks away from the edge. And it's been effective. It's also been quite entertaining, too. All right, I'm heading back to the shack here because blasting around the border is not all that I have been doing. I've been doing some redecorating over here. I've been redecorating the area in early surface of the moon. There's the fenced in area that I'm leaving grass in for passive mobs to spawn. And this is the area that was all grass and so on. As a matter of fact, this goes all the way back to the other wall. Those netherrack fires are burning on that wall. So I've cleared an enormous amount of stuff here. In all total, I've used about eight and a half stacks of TNT so far. 
and I have another nine available right now. Lots of blasting. I ended up putting these bridges in here because it was getting rather difficult to maneuver with all this uh, basic ro rambling crater here. And now I have another blast all set to go. Now in most of these, in most of this, I've been uh, individually setting and detonating the charges one at a time. But for that over there, I have positioned about a stack and a half of TNT. And I've wired the whole thing with redstone and repeaters so that I could stand here on top of the shack and set the whole thing off at once. And no time like the present, so let's do this. Now wait for this thing to update. I'm quite sure it's going to take a while. Let's see. Let's see. Looks like they all went off. And there's a bunch of redstone down there. I want to try to recover as much of that as I can. Not bad. I don't suppose I'm going to get a whole lot of my repeaters back. By necessity, most of them are pretty close to the charges. But this is what I mean by decorating an early surface of the moon. Because... <laughs> It's getting pretty barren around here right now. I suppose I could have chosen a better time of day to do this. Oh well. I just wanted to uh, share this little tidbit before I ended the video. I was I had already ended it before doing this, but I had this all set up and I figured, okay, I'll go ahead and do this, add it on there. A little bit of entertainment Minecraft style. There's some small areas that need to be taken care of with a shovel, but... And then there's falling in. Okay. Falling in because one is not looking where one is going. All right. Okay. The blasting continues. I'm estimating that I probably have the area between a third and a half done. And I'm going to continue working on that. And uh, we'll get the whole job done. My next the next part of this task, I think, is going to be to get out a couple of axes and start cutting trees. Because 
over that way especially there are a lot of them and I'm probably going to end up needing the wood anyway so it will be time to start cutting a lot of trees next time you see this place it's going to look even more like the surface of the moon take it easy I'm out of here